G'day there. Uh, I have here nine microwaves which I'm going to be taking apart for their parts. So that's Tear Down Tuesday. Take back soon. So microwave number one, I have its top cover off. And it's hardly been used, everything's very clean in there. Yeah, main power input board there. This little inductor here is a really good one for dual thieves and stuff. Microwave oven transformer. Um, Magnetron, sorry, with the makes microwaves. Microwave oven transformer down there. There is a capacitor there with a resistor on it to ground. For those of you that have been wondering about that, I think this might be some kind of Australian thing, it seems. A few people in the UK are saying they've never seen such a thing. There's no diodes in this one, unfortunately. I was hoping for a voltage doubling arrangement on the capacitor. And I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but if we look back in there, we can see on the capacitor that it has a picture of a capacitor with a resistor across the capacitor as well. There's the bleed resistor out here, which I think we'll find in the mega ohms range. I can't really read that number, I'll get a meter out and test it later. And over this side we have the main control board. There's not too much that's great stuff there. A couple of relays that are handy. I like these piezo buzzers, they're good for all sorts of crazy experiments. Crystal oscillator, big transformer that's always good, good for wire and stuff. And in here we have some really good switches. Oh, and of course there's the um, high voltage fuse and the fan. Now I love, if I don't know if you can see here, maybe through the back there, the bobbins on those fans for Tesla coils. Quite a lot of the Tesla coils in my videos are made from those bobbins on the secondaries. Now, I think the reason this microwave may have failed, I found it in a skip bin, so I'm assuming it doesn't work, I haven't tested it, is it's a stainless steel body, but it's still got its um, plastic wrapping on it, and it does appear. There goes my dog bowl full of screws. I think this microwave might have actually been run the um, plastic kick off in the vents there, which probably would have caused some sort of overheat failing one of the components inside. So microwave number one is all torn down. I had to take most of the panels off to get all the stuff. On the back here, first time I've come across it, there was an access panel for the little stepper motor that runs the turntable, but the um, I had to grind till the corners off. The tabs were still joined up, and the other two snapped off as soon as I tried to bend it out of the way. <coughs> That's the little plate there. I'm probably not keeping any of this stuff over here. That's the face plate there, I've taken the board out of that. This will all be going to the tip, although, as I've got a few microwaves, I may look into the scrap metal value of all these chassis. I'm also considering keeping a couple of the doors, especially some of the ones with glass fronts, like this one because they may be handy for something, or they don't know what, so limited space, I may not keep them. What I did get, that's cool. I got a magnetron, which I'm pretty sure still works. I think I've found the cause of um, the microwave getting put in the bin. I've got two thermostats. I'm pretty sure they're thermostats. They may be temperature sensors, but they're something temperature, relate, temperature control related. The main input board, which has got a fuse and a couple of capacitors and a nice inductor on it. Microwave oven transformer and capacitor. There's a better look at those markings. So this one's 1.08 microfarads, which is not bad. And there's a 5 kV fuse in there. That's handy. And the microwave oven transformer itself. I also got the fan. And I love the bobbins off these for Tesla coils. You just um, you take the main parts out with the screws under there. These ones are rivets, so it's a drill apart job. And then you just grab a heavy pair of pliers or a hammer or something and you can actually break this large piece of laminating away, sometimes a couple of layers at a time. And then the core comes out on its own separate little laminated bar, which I often keep in case I want to use them for inductors and be able to slip the um, magnetic part back in the core of it again. Have an adjust adjustable inductor even. Great little... Um, Geared stepper motor there, runs directly on AC, very low current, great for um, spit roasts and things like that. 
And one of the things I was really hoping to get a few of didn't turn out so great out of this microwave, these little switches. They're really good little switches. That one's just a um, single pole one. It's normally open, closed when you depress it. And these other two that were in here, they failed. This one just popped apart as I was taking it out, which I think will still work. You can actually see the inside working of it there, which is cool. Um, so I think I can just put that back on there and that probably still works. But this one was all burned out. Sorry about that. Camera fail. Um, battery went flat. So as I was just saying, it looks like this little switch blew itself apart due to arcing. I don't think all the pieces came out complete. And there is the what's left. It's a little contact point. So I don't think that was working. Um, so another cool find out of this one was the um, on the front panel there was a knobby bit and a turny knob. And it's actually got a rotary switch. I don't know if you can hear that clicking, but. I don't think that's a potentiometer. If it is, it's an indexed one. And it's actually marked R-O-T-A on the board. A couple of momentary switches. Don't know if I'll use that display for anything. Then on the other side, as I pointed out, there's two relays. There's a good capacitor there. The um, transformer's even marked for its outputs. That's handy. You can work out the windings from that. Piezo buzzer. Crystal oscillator, bunch of little transistors. All the transistors on this board are all marked the same. Uh, C1815. So it's handy to have a good supply of small and disposable transistors that I don't mind destroying in experiments. And the last other cool find was this is actually a convection microwave and had these heat elements in there, which are conveniently labelled as 120 volts and 470 watts each and they were connected in series to make the 240 volts for here in Australia. So they could be handy for dummy loads or various other experiments as well. Might even try using one for a um, heated bed in my 3D printer. That might be slight overkill. A few other bonuses, extra wire, although I've got miles of that. And another power cord, again got plenty of them. That's how many screws I've got so far. There are still some left in the microwave chassis, but I don't particularly want to keep this one for sheet metal or have a need for tons more screws, so I'm going to have plenty left by the time I get to the end of this pile. So, I've only got a few hours of sunlight left, so I'm going to get stuck into this and do some more video towards the end and show the pile of parts and rubbish and stuff. Microwave number two, back already. Torque screws. I hate torque screws. Just the two of them it seems holding the main panel on. Luckily I recently purchased myself these lovely torque drivers. So that should get me out of trouble, trouble in no time. There's microwave number two. It's a bit more roomy inside. I've only taken the top cover off again. Again we have a um, bleed resistor on the microwave oven capacitor and no multiplier setup, no diodes. Fuse there, clip straight onto the um, transformer this time. Another microwave transformer about the same size. Another magnetron, another light globe, switches, all the same sort of get up there. Only one relay on the board this time because no convection. Alright, I'll get these parts out and onto the next microwave. So, this microwave number two again, we've got this bottom plate for the um, turntable stepper motor. And it's got these little welded, well not even welded, cast um, stamps that are fittings that are still joined up. So, okay, so if we can pop them with a screwdriver. And it doesn't look like I want to pop with a screwdriver. So then, after I grind it, quite easily. Sorry about the shaky camera while I'm here. with the screwdriver.
You just have to use a reasonable amount of violence there. Put up there. There we go. Uh, just a single screw. That's the second motor. And the last the wiring line. Alright, that's microwave number three. Still gotta get the circuit board, then microwave. Microwave number three. Um, clearly a cat owner. There's yeah, cat hair and grease all over the back there. Um, this one had a trick screw here. Been sitting here trying to reef the top cover off for the last two or three minutes and decided it felt like it was definitely still pinned on somewhere. Some bugger painted the screw white. Almost didn't see it. So, got the cover off microwave number three after I pulled out that white painted screw. And you may notice it's a little different to the average microwave inside. There's a, um, I should fuck out the light too much here. I can't actually see the screen of my camera in the sun too well. So sorry about poor footage here, but um, there's some big ass looking offsets back there. There's also a wave rectifier. There's a couple that looks like a um, transistor and a protection diode. And a full wave rectifier. Which drives this big flyback coil. And I'm looking at the core in that one and the bobbin that's on there and thinking, hello. Uh, it does look like I finally found myself some high voltage diodes too. So, there's another big inductor down the back there, right down the back. Some ferrite beads, and some nice big juicy capacitors on the input board too. Main button board's not much to look at, but that is very different. So, on to pulling it apart. Oh, it's a Panasonic, it doesn't have a model number or anything marked on it anyway. So. Microwave, microcontrol might, might help someone look that up if you want to find out more about that, what appears to be a DC flyback driving circuit down there. Okay, so this is microwave number five. We're onto the top of the second stack. Um, doing a growing accumulation of parts down here. Magnetrons and knots and DC board, boards and all sorts of stuff. Screw bolts filling up. And this one again, I haven't, I haven't the only one I've had a um, multiplier diodes on so far was that DC board. This one again, we've got a um, grounding resistor. And this time it's a square one. That sounds really annoying. You can see it's square that way. Now the mark, this one's actually labelled, which is better than what microwave. Tiny little server board up there. All the standard gear, on the fan, another input board, more switches. Yay! And we're into microwave number four now. Yeah, much the same sort of stuff. Got a ground resistor down there from the capacitor. Down to earth. Just on the body of the microwave. 1000 watt microwave, uh, microwave oven transformer. A circuit board. This one's got plenty of cockroach eggs all over it. And roach poo down there. Yum. Um, the main reason I'm including this one in the video is because on the power board, input board, I found this lovely green toroid. These green ones tend to have really high permeability. So that's a nice score there. Still no multiplier diodes. I'm really dirty about that. I was hoping to have a big fat stack of multiplier diodes by the end of the day. Oh well, let's keep going. Okay, I'm into microwave number seven now. Again, pretty much the same sort of stuff in there. Another one of those plastic toroids. Another diodey thing. Is this? It turns out I think they're diodes. I found this schematic on the inside of microwave number five, I think, or six. One, two before this one. And 
from the high voltage capacitor here, which is shown again with an internal bleed resistor, is a grounding diode. So there you go. Been, diodes have been getting all along, not resistors. Probably would have worked that out when I went to test the ohms on them, but anyhow, it's handy to know. Okay, down to microwave number eight. I need two to go now. And what's that? Ah, more torque screws. I hate torque screws. They just suck. Now I've got to go and change the drill bit again. Okay, down to the last microwave, number nine. And last interesting find for the day, this big wire round ceramic or concrete cement whatever resistor that's down there. It's actually hooked up to this wire here on the main input for the microwave oven transformer. And the black wire goes up here to one of these relays which actually connects down to this other relay which then feeds off to the um, capacitor which I've removed. So I'm guessing that some sort of grounding when it's turned off. I'm not really sure. So that there's no inductive power stored in the transformer. Just a guess, not sure. Anyone's got any ideas why that's there? I'd love to know. One last thing with this microwave, last microwave number nine, it's actually labeled as a sensor microwave. And what that is, is part of what just fell off. This little panel was sort of sitting in there like that, covering up these ventilation holes. And there's this little sensor underneath, which I believe is a moisture sensor of some sort, or a humidity detect sensor. It works on measuring the steam somehow. Whether it measures thickness or density of steam, or temperature or something, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, that's the sensor part out of a sensor microwave. And it's on this long, braided metal cable that's not got the earth braiding as part of the circuit and three wires hooking up to the main board. Okay, I'm going to do a bit of a tidy up and I'll be back with all the stuff that I got. Okay, so after nine microwaves and running out of sunlight, I have a nice collection of magnetrons and a big malt stack and a cool DC mod. That'll be fun to play with. Probably end up just ripping the um, core off that. It's actually interesting. It's got the, um, I couldn't see the secondary wind on it at first. It's just got the, what appears to be a single wind of um, multi-strand. Then when I was looking carefully through the, those little slots there, I can actually see some of the wires connecting to these four pins, or five pins here, six pins. And some of the wires some of the pins have two wires connected to them, and some of the wires uh, pins only have one wire connected. So that's how the primary and secondary is achieved there. A couple of them are just run around in series, I think. Two, la two laps around the same winding of multi-strand. So that was pretty cool. And it's probably got some awesome transistors on it too, I'm thinking and big stack of microwave oven capacitors and stepper drive stepper motors with gearboxes and all these fans and I really do like pulling the bobbins off these for Tesla coils as I think I mentioned now I've got these separated into two stacks these guys are all single filler single winding bobbins these three are particularly cool because they have three terminals and a bi filler winding and I have actually unwound one of those bifiller coils in the past. And one of the co coils on there is really small. And there's a spider. Don't bite me, spider. So, yeah, they might be, if you leave the um, core in those, they could be quite good for pulse motors. I'm thinking. Using this shorter coil for a trigger coil. Uh, what else have we got? Got a bunch of light globes. They're all good light globes. None of them are burnt out. Despite the discoloration to some of them, I think that's just from the fat and grease that builds up. All these power input filters. I may save some of them intact for various projects. Um, I also do like the capacitors and the inductors off those, particularly the one 
with the green core, that's definitely coming off. Um, and one of them, this one got a bit cracked up coming out, so that'll be getting pulled apart. And that looks like a pretty decent 2 microfarad capacitor there. And there's another one. And we've got all the main circuit boards. Some of them are quite small. I think this one runs the record for the um, smallest circuit board out of a microwave. That is the complete circuit board. Minus the buttons and the display, which plugs in via that ribbon. Different buzzer on that one too, which could be fun for some vibrational energy harvesting. So, all in all, it's been a pretty good day. I've got a bit of rubbish over here. I've got a whole ute load of microwave bodies, and there's all the top lids that are put in the rubbish. I'm half tempted to start selling these screws on eBay. I've got buckets and buckets of them. Um, a few turntables, I've got five turntables. So, four of them didn't have turntables in. A couple of them came complete with their own life forms. I don't know what's going on there. I think these microwaves, some of these microwaves with really dirty turntables may have actually still been working and they purely got thrown out because people didn't want to clean them. Um, I also got all these great switches. Getting lots of them accumulated now. Another stepper for the stepper pile. Oh, he's still got a loom on him. All right. And all these sensors, mostly thermostats, I think. One of them was actually labelled for 250, um, 250 degrees C. So I think they're just thermostats on off jobs, not any sort of variable control there. And this is actually the sensor out of the sensor microwave, which does some kind of steam sensing. Not sure whether it's temperature or volume of steam or density of steam or what's going on there. But um, yeah. And of course the elements there, they'll be fun to play with or use as dummy loads. And I think that's about it. Nice pile of wire, all different colours, great for projects. That's about it. So I'm going to use the last of the light I have and tidy all this up. Thanks for watching.